it's Alex. I haven't done one of these in a long time. I keep uh, meaning to put some stuff up, but life's kind of gotten in the way recently. But I had a really interesting conversation with someone recently about how to create that music that's in your head. And I think this is something that a lot of musicians struggle with. It's actually something that I don't struggle with, and I want to share kind of why that is, why I think that is. And um, you know, maybe this will give people some different perspective, insights. In particular, I was uh, talking with someone on Facebook, and they were saying that they had gotten stuck in their you know, kind of creative process because they didn't have the ability to kind of realize, to manifest the sound that they were hearing in their head or the, the, the music that they wanted to create. And I suggested that, you know, this is something that I've been working a lot with Mike Monday on is, you know, rather than trying to start from the sound in your head and create that, for me personally, I find that the less intention I bring to a piece of music, actually, the better it turns out. Um, just to give you guys a quick example, I recently made a cover of this Cashmere's uh, Percolator using sounds that I sampled from an actual coffee percolator, and it was, it was a lot of fun. However, because I was approaching the coffee percolator with a specific intent in mind, um, you know, I, I had to make a snare sound, so I, I would use it to make a snare sound, or I had to make a hi-hat sound. So there was kind of this form and this structure and these particular sounds already in my head that I was trying to recreate. I was able to do that to an extent, but I do feel like it limited my creativity in a lot of ways, and the result didn't have as much of that character that I think is, is kind of unique to me in the final product, in the finished song. And that's a very different process than, I think, the, the songs that I've been producing recently, which do sound like me. Um, because with, with those songs, they take a very particular approach of not looking for a sound that sounds like something. So I don't want to look for a sound that sounds like a snare or sounds like a synth or sounds like a whatever. Instead, I look for really just interesting sounds, sounds that kind of grab my ear. And then I try to actually find what's in the sound musically already you know is there a particular pitch or harmony in the sound there's some really interesting like harmonies almost in in the sound of like dripping water for example um or you know is there a kind of an interesting rhythm to a uh, cup falling over or to you know uh radiator hum or something, you know, what, what kind of musical element is hidden within these sounds that I can kind of discover, and then how can I let that element, which I didn't think up at all, kind of inspire this uh, track around that. And so it's been this amazing process for me because I feel like I'm not bringing any kind of intent to it in the sense of I'm going to make this type of song, I'm going to make this type of sound. And it's really this organic, spontaneous kind of evolution from this uh, seed, which, you know, happened to be something almost coincidental. Like, I mean, these sounds are things just in my daily life, so I basically just stumble upon them. And, it, and I feel like in that process, the, the resultant music has a character that cannot be anything other than me because I'm not trying to imitate or make it sound like something I've heard before. Of course, 
all of those musical influences that I have in my life, all of the other things that influence me are gonna come out naturally, subconsciously in that process. But there's no intention to kind of sound a certain way. And because of that, I think it ends up sounding like me because that's what's naturally gonna come out. But to go back to kind of this conversation I was having with someone and you know for him he was saying well if I can't make the music that I want to make you know what's the point like this I have this uh, vision I have this dream that I want to manifest and how do I make that you know into a reality if I kind of give up on that what's what's the point like what what am I creating and I, I get what he's saying, you know, I, I think, I think in a sense there, there is a part of art that is about manifesting a vision or a dream that we have, even though um, my approach is to do that without a specific intention, say, as to what it's going to sound like, I am trying to, you know, there is a certain feel that that I hope to manifest and there are certain things that I want my art to evoke in people or I want my music to evoke in people so so I get what he's saying I, I mean I think that that speaks very much to the heart of what an artist kind of hopes for the reason I was kind of playing the devil's advocate with him in this conversation is because I think the danger of bringing too much of an intention aside from the fact that um, you know, maybe you're limiting your creativity or originality in certain ways. I think the real danger, though, is that when you have a very specific intention, for example, oh, I have this uh, particular sound in my head that I want to play, I want to, want to write a song like that. There is often a judgment that comes along with that. So you have this sound in your head, you go to write it down, and you start to play it, or you start to program it, or whatever, and right away your brain goes, that's not the sound. You start to play a few notes, no, 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 that's not it. Uh, what if I do it? No, no, still not sound. And that judgment is an immediate creativity, momentum, motivation <laughs> killer. It just kind of destroys your forward motion because your brain is saying, you haven't even finished the thing yet, that's already wrong. And that editor, because you're kind of comparing these two things already, because you're kind of comparing this one sound that you have in your head, which which doesn't actually exist even. I mean, it's just it's just an idea, and you're comparing that to the reality of what you're actually creating. You're setting up this judgment, and it just it, I find it's it's like an incredible block to moving forward. I do this a lot in my when I write. You know, like I'm trying to write that first sentence in a paper, say, and uh, and right away. You know, it's like, I come up with a few words. Oh, no, it's not good enough. I have, you know, if I write something down and all of a sudden, oh, no, like, this doesn't make any sense. This isn't beautiful language. That's not the right word. Whatever it is, it doesn't match the ideal that I have in my head. And so it just cuts that momentum right down. And I think if there are ways to get around this particular block. Now, for me, that has a lot to do with not coming with that expectation or not coming with that intention. For other people, it may be to, I've had experiences myself in, in the past as well of just not listening to that voice, you know, saying like, okay, yes, it's, it's not as good or it's different or whatever, but just hold on, you know, wait till the song is finished or wait till this process is finished, then make your judgment or you know, wait till I'm out of the studio and then listen to it and make your judgment. There are lots of techniques to get past this block, but I think it's very important that we try to do it because if we are 
always stopped right at the beginning because we feel that what we're creating is not at the level of what we want to create or is not the same as what we want to create then we always get stopped at that first step and I feel like there's um, what I've experienced is there's so much growth to be had in moving beyond that first step even if it's not the same even if it's not what you initially wanted to create even if it doesn't sound good sometimes you know <laughs> a lot of times when I'm working on a, a particular a piece of music and there's an element that I add in and, and it doesn't work well if I just stop there and say oh that sounds bad you know it, that's the end of the song right it, it's sounds bad I don't really want to work on it anymore but if I kind of push myself to move beyond that and maybe add in a few more elements sometimes that thing that sounded so off before becomes a really interesting and, and key element in the final piece because there's something else that kind of brings it back into harmony with the song so and this is a kind of a long rant but I think it's a really interesting look at the question you know how do we realize this music that's in our head and, and I would say you know first off question is that really what you want to accomplish because for me I think what I, what I hope to accomplish as a musician has a lot more to do with what effect my music is going to have on others rather than being able to create a very particular sound or a very particular style I, re I really don't care about that that's just me personally but also more importantly, even if that is what you want as a goal, you know, you, you are determined to create this particular sound that you want to realize. And, and I think that's an admirable goal. I would say anything that's stopping you from making music, whether it's the judgment that you don't have the knowledge or the ability or that it doesn't sound the same as the idea, whatever thought that's coming into your head that is stopping you in your process, kill that thought, get rid of it. Uh, keep moving, keep making music, and eventually through that process you will get to the point where you can realize that sound. So I hope that this little rant has proved somewhat informative, and uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts on the subject. Are you trying to make the music that's in your head? Do you not care about that? Do you work with a lot of intention when you write music or do you kind of take a more spontaneous improvisational approach uh let me know i want to hear from you all so i will talk to you soon and here's to the journey